As some of you might already know, our Facebook page was unpublished two weeks ago. No infractions cited, no community guidelines broken, not even a process. They simply flipped a switch and now we're gone. This was after a period of 800% growth each week with over 25,000 subscribers. Now look, before we get into this, this isn't a Republican channel, so the whole thing's not gonna be about, you know, my first amendment. They're ruining my first amendment, wah, 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 whatever. Starting from that understanding of them being a private company, I wanna talk what kind of company they actually are and how they view themselves. And I'm talking about Facebook, I'm talking about TikTok, I'm especially talking about Twitter. And I feel like a good start is maybe discussing what the fourth estate is, the free press. So before Matt Talaby decided to cash out, he used to write for the Rolling Stone and everything he would write had a series of editors. They would have to follow up on quotes, make sure he wasn't misstating anything and follow up on facts. Smash cut to Matt Talaby now. He spent the last four months writing tweets about Hunter Biden's dick and trying to make a mountain out of this molehill with his Twitter files. Now here's the difference. Matt doesn't have to go through an editor anymore. Essentially, Elon is his editor. So there's no following up on quotes. There's no following up on facts. I would argue that social media has become the fifth estate. You know, Elon, Zuckerberg, TikTok, they don't see themselves as publishers. And that's to keep them out of any kind of ramifications for when they editorialize. And one Congress lady who's never shied away from a circle jerk, I imagine, decided to throw in her victim complex. Mr. Roth, Miss Gaddy, did either of you approve the shadow banning of my account at Lauren Boebert? Yes or no? No, I did not. Not to the best of my recollection. Well, let me refresh your memory because on March 12th, 2021, and Mr. Roth, I know you looked at it because Fascist Twitter 1.0 had a public interest exceptions policy, which means for members of Congress to be shadow banned, it had to go before you, Mr. Roth. So I'll ask again, did you shadow ban my account? Yes or no? I mean, it's not even that good of a joke. It's definitely not a joke worth getting banned over. You know, the Hillary jokes have kind of run their course. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, butter emails. And I guarantee this isn't even her joke. Yeah, see, look, anytime you see something on Twitter, that's kind of remotely witty from a Republican, you're gonna find like 50 accounts that immediately copy and paste that. And it's because it's so rare that they come up with anything witty, right? I mean, they still say, let's go Brandon. They're still making jokes about pronouns. I'm very disappointed you haven't given me my own pronouns. Hottest <laughs> Britain in the world. I mean, how old are these jokes? Come up with some new material. The right are getting better at copy and pasting. And that scares the lefties. Thanks Breitbart. Here's the thing, and it's not what she meant, but Bimbart did stumble into something that is a growing problem with social media, with governments, and with this country. And that is the hold that techno-fascism is taking on all of us. Now, if you're a Republican and you've stuck around long enough, get ready, because I'm about to do your favorite thing, your favorite thing in the world. Both sides, both sides are affected by this. Unelected billionaires, unelected, running social media sites, policing speech on the left and the right, not, not all the time even with a human, but with AI algorithms. The left and the right are both affected by these suppression tools, pushing your content down, shadow banning you, or removing you from platforms without any infractions caused. And I just wanna reiterate, this isn't about breaking the terms of service. This isn't about getting in trouble for like threatening people online or using hate language. That's not what I'm talking about, all right? This isn't my furry speech. This is cutting out content, actively cutting out searching content that goes against a narrative these social media billionaires are trying to push, left and right, my both sides. Twitter threw me in jail half a dozen times during you know Trump's regime, but all while on the back end, changing their actual terms and services to accommodate his rhetoric. Into it. Ms. Navaroli, let's talk about something real. I'd like to show you a tweet posted by former President Trump about my colleagues and I on July 14, 2019. It says in part, quote, why don't they go back and help fix the totally broken and crime infested places from which they came? Then come back and show us how it's done. 
These places need your help badly. You can't leave fast enough. I'm sure that Nancy Pelosi would be very happy as quickly to work out free travel arrangements. A day or two after that, uh, Donald Trump publicly uh, incited you know, violence at a rally, uh, targeting four congresswomen, including myself, saying, go back to where you came from. Uh, Ms. Navarroli, as I understand it, you were uh, the most senior member of Twitter's content moderation team, or a senior member of Twitter's content moderation team when this was posted. Um, as part of your responsibilities, did you review this tweet? Yes, it was my team's responsibility to review these tweets. And what did you conclude? My team made the recommendation that for the first time we find Donald Trump in violation of Twitter's policies and use the public interest interstitial. For the first time? Yes. And at the time, Twitter's policy included a specific example when it came to banned abuse uh, against immigrants as in they specifically included the phrase, go back to your country or go, or go back to where you came from, correct? Yes, that was specifically included in the content moderation guidance as and an you, example. You brought this up to the vice president of trust and safety, Del Harvey, correct? I did, yes. And she overrode your assessment, didn't she? Yes, she did. Um, and something interesting happened after she overrode your assessment. A day or two later, Twitter seemed to have changed their policies, didn't they? Yes, that trope, go back to where you came from, was removed from the content moderation guidance as an example. So Twitter changed their own policy after the president violated it um, in order to potentially accommodate his tweet? Yes. Thank you. Um, so much for bias against right wing on Twitter. Uh, additionally, me making a joke about Marjorie Taylor Greene belonging in an exhibit of early man afforded me a seven day Twitter ban. That rhymed and it sounds really stupid, but but as AOC pointed out, an on the nose racist tirade against congresswomen goes unmolested, untouched, and they actually change. They change their terms of service for him. They are making themselves the editors of what they deem important speech. You know, I don't think the Republicans' Twitter charade went went the way they planned. Uh, Miss uh, uh, Naravoli, earlier you testified about a 2019 tweet um, that was about President Trump, and I think it was from uh, Miss Teagan. What was the tweet about? Would you like me to give the direct quote? Yeah. Um, please excuse my language. This is a direct quote, but Chrissy Teigen referred to Donald Trump as a pussy ass bitch. Okay. Free speech. And what happened after Ms. Teagan posted her tweet? What did the White House do? What did the Trump White House do? From my understanding, the White House reached out to ask that this tweet be removed. It was my team's uh, job. Uh, this fell underneath the policy for abusive behaviors, and we evaluated underneath our insults policy. At that time, up to three insults were allowed, and so it was our job to determine how many insults were included so, so the, within that phrase. So the Trump White House reached out, not an agency, but the White House reached out and requested that you remove the, the tweet. From my understanding, yes. Okay. Bimbart's out here complaining that her dank jokes just aren't reaching the audience, right? I mean, what's her job? She's a comedian, right? And that's detrimental. That's detrimental to her work. She's out there. She's out there complaining about that. While the president, he was president of the United States is writing to Twitter to get them to remove a tweet where Chrissy, whatever, John Legend's wife, called him a pussy-ass bitch. That's what he was spending his time doing. Thank you. And I'm a victim, I will tell you. Now, to me, the president of the United States, the president of the free world, having his feelings hurt so bad by a tweet kind of sounds like he's a pussy-ass bitch. I, I don't know. I don't know. Please don't take me down. TikTok took down my entire account for one video. One video where I compared the modern day Republicans to the Taliban. I didn't incite violence. I didn't get racist. All I did was show a Venn diagram of where they cross over in beliefs. You can't even show that. The horrible communication of Facebook to me for removing my entire channel. I have no idea why. I can only assume it may might have been a spam attack. It might just be a glitch that they don't know how to fix. But the lack of communication to me just seems unacceptable. And this 
And this is the problem I'm getting at. Our, our page had 25,000 subscribers. That's not, I'm not pretending like that's a million. But everybody was really engaged. It's an active community. When 25,000 subscribers, fully monetized, rests, rest on the singularity of who's ever reviewing at that particular time. So if I get a chud who's reviewing it, I don't know what his, his qualifications or his beliefs, but he gets to decide singularly the fate of my entire channel, which we put, you know, three to four years into. Time, money, effort, organizing, you name it. And my both sides, if you have a channel that leans to the right, isn't calling for violence or breaking eight terms of service, the fate of your channel should also not rest in some pink haired social justice warrior out to get a point. That's editing. That's editorializing. And I don't want false heroes being spawned from this. I want governmental change. Look, Elon's out there. He's telling you he's for both sides, right? This Elon right here, who's chumming it up with Rupert Murdoch at the Super Bowl. And like a month before that with Jared Kushner. That, that fucking Elon. I opened a Twitter account back in November and I didn't touch it. Didn't upload a picture, didn't click on anything, didn't heart anything. Just to see how it was gonna react. If you're a brand new account coming in to Elon's Twitter. Now, when I first signed up for the original Twitter in like 2009, I think they recommended Tay Tay to me, right? Do you wanna follow Taylor Swift? Yes, please. Should have just added her from the get go. Who doesn't like Taylor Swift? Now, an account I've never touched under Elon's Twitter spams me, my email, not even the Twitter app. They spam my email with this every single day, sometimes twice a day. I mean, this doesn't even look like email at this point. It just looks like AOC's DMs from Thirsty Incels, right? I mean, just look at these. You got your propagandist and felon, Dinesh Souza, right? Trump pardoned him. That's being forced in. That's the Taylor Swifts of Elon's Twitter. You know, you got your far-right fascist, unapologetical fascist, Laura Loomer, who's still on there denying, denying elections. You see, this is publishing. This is editorializing. This is Elon choosing what I should see. I mean, what else we got? We got Dan Bondingo, the foreskin of Tucker's penis. Like I've ever wanted to follow Dan Bondingo for anything. What's it? And like some site called N Wokeness. Never clicked a like on anything. Didn't even upload a picture into this account. And this is what you get. You know, and then of course you got to kick it off with uh, Fox News praising Elon for banning journalists from Twitter. So, yeah. We're not in Tay-Tay. We're not in Tay-Tay land anymore. And this week it was confirmed what we all already knew. Elon is forcing his way into everyone's timeline. A rich kid from apartheid South Africa who LARPed as an American generational talent now forces his way into an interaction on an app I've used for over a decade. All while rallying up the lowest dregs of the Republican Party the lower class and the middle class who go out and cry and plead and cry that we are forcing, forcing our culture onto them. Think about, think about that. Brand new account, Mr. Free Speech. I'll tell you this right now. Mr. Free Speech is nothing more than the new Mr. Fair and Balanced. While we're here with Rupert in the fourth estate, I don't know if you all saw the fiasco this week with Fox News. But they are a very different company. I mean, we all know this, but now it's proven through the text messages, through the interactions. They are a very different company behind the scenes. Is the fix already in? It is a damning indictment of Fox News. The outcome of our presidential election was seized from the hands of voters. As a network publicly and repeatedly promoted former President Trump's 2020 election fraud claims to millions of their viewers. Every American should be angry. You should be outraged. You should be worried. You should be concerned at what has happened in the election and in the lead up to this election. Privately, top anchors and executives mock Trump's lies, calling them ludicrous, really crazy stuff and totally off the rails. The revelations coming from hundreds of pages of newly released evidence in the legal filing. Tucker Carlson and Laura Ingram texting each other back about how batshit, how batshit the Republican Party is. Sydney Kraken, whatever, Rudy. And then they're like, yeah, our viewers, our viewers are good people. They're just dumb. Sydney Powell believed that she could time travel through the wind. And that's how she knew that the election was fixed. And Ma Maria Bonatello or whatever her name is, she should be in Face Off too. 
It's a totally different face on it, but I digress. She still had her on the show. She still platformed her, even though this lady was talking. Fox News. I think this is Fox Business, right? Maria, Maria whatever the shit is on Fox Business. She still platformed her, even after she said she could time travel through the wind. The same decisions Fox News is making on their front end to show these people knowing the damage they're causing, knowing how batshit they are, is the exact same thing Elon Musk is doing with my Twitter timeline and these emails. He's editorializing. I bring this up because the only reason we have these interactions, these texts, is because Hannity, Laura Ingram, Maria Bonatello, they're all open to libel on the website in printed form and slander on the Fox News production side. Dominion was able to legally obtain these through discovery in their lawsuit against Fox News. So what does it matter? What does any of this matter? At the start of the episode, I talked about how Americans don't trust the institutions, the government anymore, right? Republicans have won one election in the past 30 years. Just one in 2004, popular vote-wise, okay? But the Supreme Court is absolutely wreaking havoc on all of our rights as citizens. And it's very against what we want, what the majority wants, and the culture of this country. Then you add another layer on. Unelected Zuckerberg. Unelected Elon, hell, even an unelected Chinese spying app can now control the public square. They can control what is important, what you hear, if you're allowed to say it, and who it reaches. Facebook hosts propagandists and small face Charlie Kirk, right? He, no matter what he puts out there, no matter what propaganda it is, he's not being flipped off on the channel. They host Tucker Carlson clips from his show. Even, even though there's documentation that behind the scenes they're saying it's all propaganda and they know it's wrong. And they're letting back on the biggest American fascism icon in like, what, the last 50 years? I don't know. Who, who even came close? Maybe Goldwater? They're letting him back on the platform to once again spread propaganda, spread hate, and, you know... I guess they'll just amend the, the terms of service again, right? But my small channel of 25,000 people I've used to organize, send out shirts, you know, and put up content to inform. That channel has to be turned off without any kind of process. And when I finally am able to reach them on email with pictures to show that I haven't been afforded any content to click on. Because Facebook says, oh, click on this content and then we'll review it. I have no infractions. Therefore, nothing to click on. Nothing was ever marked on my page. When I get that far, this Luffy, I don't even know if that's a real name, you know, four emails in of me trying to get this resolved in a timely manner after two weeks, two weeks, she tells me, Further emails, in this very passive-aggressive, right? Further emails will only delay this process. How dare you question us? How dare you question us while we flip a switch on you and remove three years, three years of work from your team, right? Techno-fascism. Where are the checks in what I am calling the fifth estate, left, right, left or right, both sides, my both sides. This is wrong. 25,000 subscribers, monetized, no infractions, no community standards. We don't, we don't editorialize, but goodbye. As stupid as Bim Bart's joke was about Hillary Clinton, it didn't warrant being shadow banned by either AI or a human. And if they do want a shadow ban, if all these social media companies want a shadow ban, then they are on the hook. They are on the hook for the libel, and, and they're on the hook for the slander. And the problem with this is Republicans also want these laws in some form. So anytime you hear that, you have to immediately, you have to immediately think how they're going to abuse them, because that's, that's what the Republican Party does, right? I can't even think of the last time they passed a law that benefited anybody. Unless you think the Patriot Act benefited anybody, taking your shoes off at the airport. But if you want to fight techno-fascism, that's the way. 
laws, liability for when you are editorializing. Now, if they're not editorializing, if they have terms of service without, you know, these algorithms that they tune, then that's fine. That's a public square. But that's not what any of you are doing. Put Elon, put Zuckerberg, put Google on the line when Trump uses that platform to incentivize violence against anyone, congresswomen, you name it. Put them on the hook when Carrie Lake calls the election fixed with zero evidence for the 60th time on their platform. Put them on the hook. Open them up. Open them up to the Dominion, to the Dominion slander libel lawsuits. So what now for this channel, you know? I get comments all the time, why aren't we bigger, like on YouTube? And it stings a little. I know it's well-intentioned, but it does. Because, you know, TikTok, 25,000. We had 25,000 on Facebook. So what now for this channel? Look, I love the YouTube family. Some of you have been here since, like, the first 200 subscribers. And I love it here. So we're going to turn our resources back to YouTube. I mean, I feel like I came in wrong with the hat on, playing Chad. It kind of detracted from the people I wanted to reach and attracted the people I wanted to reach until they figured out I was mocking them. And then it just filled the comments with a bunch of, you live in your mother's basement. So, I mean, it was my fault. I read it wrong. I kind of went away from politics for a while. And I was coming off a couple of years where I'd been on comedy gigs. And I thought I could translate. I thought I could translate some of it. But it's my fault. These past couple months on YouTube have really turned us around, you know. I, I can tell because the comments are a lot less, you know, your, your mother's basement or whatever other, you know, MAGA boomer who's watching this. On his iPhone 7. You guys appreciate much more. Trust me. I realize it. You guys appreciate much more. For me using my. You know. 30 years of political knowledge. To make these videos. To point out things. And if you don't know who I am. You know. I made a video a while back. I could, I could repost it somewhere. Put a, a link to it in this video on YouTube. But of who I am. And where I come from. I've literally been working on campaigns. Since I was like. 10 years old. And that's good. Because. Actual conversations are kind of happening now in the comments. You guys fill in the blanks sometimes of things I miss, and that's what I want. The original channel, I'm here to tell you, you know, Chad's fun. I always want to do an episode where he finally gets out of jail for January 6th. But honestly, that was all punching down at people. It really was, as much as I didn't want it to be. I want this channel to be punching up. And any kind of joke should be at the expense of the people who are joking on us. So, I like where the channel is right now. We're going to turn to YouTube a lot more and keep it up. So, YouTube likes slightly longer content, right? So, I'm going to start making slightly longer content like this. This is probably like uh, 10 minutes. And it's going to be a lot more proactive. Episodes about things. Where we research. Instead of reactive, you know. We become really reactive because TikTok and Facebook love that. They love it when you show something stupid. And then you react to it. But I think when I talk to you guys about proactive measures we can all take, it's much more well-received. So anyway, that's what happened. That's what happened with Facebook. And next week, next weekend, I'm finally going to do the episode of where I, uh, you know, I'm going to make ribs and we're going to talk about Reagan. I don't, I was going to make a brisket, but I don't think 12 hours is, to, is enough to cover just how much damage that old geezer did to this country. But next week, next Sunday, we're going to try to maybe staple down a day instead of this rando crap. So next Sunday, Reagan and ribs. I'll give you guys my rib, my smoked rib recipe. That's all for now. I hope, I hope a bunch of Facebook refugees make it over here. I'm sorry what happened. I, I, I'm still, it might come back still, but I don't know. It's really just a pain in the ass company. Chad the Judge. Trump is the new Adolf.